Let's see. A, there we go. All right. So we're being recorded now. Uh, welcome to our, oh man, what version is this? This is our 67th uh, Tuesday Tech Talk. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here. I'm Clint Stevens. And just waiting for myself to appear on the YouTube live window so I don't hear myself. Uh, we're glad you guys are here. Uh, I know Sherry doesn't have a microphone, so I'll watch the chat. Uh, Liesl, if you have questions, please feel free to, to open up your mic, turn on your camera, whatever you want to do, and, and let me know, or you can drop them in the chat. And then I'll make sure that I'm trying to add folks as we come in. Uh, so let me share my screen. We'll take a look at a couple slides here. Um, let's see, desktop two is what I want to share. Nope, I want to share that one right there. And let's see, I don't think I have any video clips, so we'll just share. All right, so welcome to Tuesday Tech Talks. Uh, the slide, let me drop the link to the slides in the chat if you would like those. And open up my chat window actually, so I can see what's happening. Okay, there we go. There's the slides if you want to follow along uh, or for later reference. Uh, so good to see you guys here. Uh, I'm Clint, a technology trainer, been here for 17 years and learning something new every day. So let's talk about Google Slides today. Uh, probably had access to this tool for a really long time. Um, Lisa, do you use slides or are you a PowerPoint or what do you use for? I do sharing. both, but I've converted over to slides, I think. Good. Yeah, it's a great tool um, and super great. I mean, I use them almost exclusively just because it is so easy to do stuff like this and share them out with other people. And if I make changes, they're updated uh, immediately. So let's kind of go through the uh, tasks. Here's a link to more information about the level one certification. And I will drop that into the chat as well. In case you guys want that later on, I'll make sure to share all these links uh, later on as we go. So uh, we've got a slide deck. I have it, actually have it in this other window here. That, and I'll show it, I can share that with you right here. Uh, that covers all of the tasks. So all of these 12 different tools that you get with your uh, Google Workspace um, accounts. And we're just going to work on the slides portion today. But if you have questions about Chrome or Gmail, anything else, you're welcome to uh, look through those slides at your, at your leisure and kind of work through those things. And if you ever do decide to take the level one certification, these are exactly the tasks that you'll need to know how to do to pass it. So uh, good review and good basic training for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my desktop. You guys seeing my a Gmail inbox? Thumbs up if you see that. Just wanna make sure changing my windows. Cool, thank you. Didn't lose my screen sharing. Uh, so here I'm in Gmail and hopefully you know to get to all the different Google apps that come along with it, you can hit the waffle up there on the top right. Uh, or you can also just in a new tab, click on go to, uh, click go to slides.google.com. Uh, you can go to drive.google.com, whoops, just drive, I need to keep typing. Com, and that'll take you to your drive uh, if you wanted to go straight to uh, your calendar, calendar.google.com, and that'll take you right there. Uh, and a trick I like to share with, with whomever I'm, I'm training is that, thank you, not now, is that, uh, if you want to create quickly a new slide deck, a new document, a new uh, whatever, like say I want to do a new slideshow, I can just go slides.new in my Google, as long as I'm using Chrome, and do slides.new, and it will create a brand new presentation, save it in my drive. It won't organize it into a folder, but you can do that later on. But just to, it's a quick and easy way so that you don't have to go to your email and go to drive and do all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's, but let's show you how to get there anyway. Uh, from the waffle, click there and I click on Google Drive or you can go straight to slides. I like to go from Drive and that way I can kind of keep things organized as I go. This is my training account. 
that I use to demonstrate stuff. So I don't have a ton of stuff in here. Uh, but if you're with us last time, we created this My Classroom folder and a shared folder with uh, called Shared Lessons with some other resources and things like that in it. Uh, but I'm just going to start here today and follow the steps that are outlined in the slides. And I'll, um, there, I'm not going to go back and forth between them. I've just got them on a separate screen. But if you have a question about what I'm doing or the next steps, I'm just going to read through the steps and let's talk through how to do them. So uh, the things we're going to do today, maybe I will show this quickly, is we're going to learn how to create a slide presentation. Emily, welcome. Good to see you. If you have questions, open up your mic or drop it in the chat. Uh, how to create a slide presentation, learn how to enhance your slides with videos, colors, and fonts, add comments, collaborate on a slide deck with somebody else, and then you can also present them directly from Google Meet. I won't be able to show that because we're using Zoom today, but uh, you can just, I, I might be able to show a Meet window and show you how to get to some slides. So I'm just going to drop this on my other screen and follow along. And again, these are in the uh, the session slides. I'll drop that in the chat one more time if you want to follow along with those in a separate window. All right. So I'll create a new slide presentation and title it Digital Citizenship. So two ways to do that from Drive. Up here on the upper left, I can go to Google Slides. Uh, also, there's these great templates. You can choose blank presentation uh, or from a template. I won't dig into those today, uh, but there's some really nice starting points for you, for you there. So I can click new there, or I did that slides.new, and it already gave me a new slideshow. So I'll just work with that one, and I'm going to call it digital citizenship. Let's see how well Clint can type with people watching. Okay, on the first slide, add the title Internet Safety Tips. I'm just going to copy this from over here. Uh, let's, oh, let's, let's call this one Digital Citizenship. So let's do that. And on a new slide, making a new slide come up here. The, the plus will give me just the basic title and, and information kind of slide. Um, if I don't want that, I can always hit the undo button. That's your friend. Or command or control Z is undo. But if you hit that little drop down next to the plus, It'll actually show you if there are other layouts associated with the template you're using. Uh, this will give you a choice on which type of slide you want to do. Uh, so let's see, on the second slide, let's see. So I want to do just a, let's do title and body. We'll just keep it easy. And internet safety tips is the title for this one. I don't need it in quotes. And then another new slide. And we're going to call that one on the second slide, add three internet safety tips. Oh boy, internet safety tips. So I can put those in here. If I want to choose or create a list, I can either do a numbered list, one, two, three, right there. Or if I want to do just a, an unordered, a numbered list, I can do that. Um, so let's see, three internet safety tips off the top of my head. Uh, don't visit untrusted sites. Uh, let's see. What's another good one? Uh, don't click on links that you are unsure. Uh, let's see, links from an untrusted source. How about that? From an untrusted source. Or if you Yo, you do not know where it will take you. And then the last one, let's see, internet safety. Um, when in doubt, talk to an adult you trust. We'll assume these are for kids anyway. Okay. Oh, that was a good quiz there. Let's see. Find and insert a YouTube video that can address copyright. Okay, so let's insert a YouTube video, ways to do that. Uh, up here under the insert menu, we have video and you can insert any video that you want in a Google slide, as long as it's on YouTube or in Google Drive. So if you wanna share one from uh, like Vimeo or some other sources like that, um, you can link to them, but you can't actually embed them and view them right in the slideshow, unless it's a YouTube or Google Drive video. Uh, but I can search, 
YouTube straight from here. I don't have to open up a new tab and go find it there. So let's see. Uh, let's see. Copyright. Copyright issues. And I can search for that. Fair use. Let's see the truth about copyright information technology from cyber law. Has a lot of views there. This one has a, let's see, let's do that one. 1 1.4 million views, I got that. Just click it, click insert, and then the video will drop in right there wherever I want. And then I can move it around, put it wherever I want. If I want to change, got it, thank you. Uh, the size or shape of my um, text there, I can just click the box that it's in and drag those things around. There's also nice alignment guides. So that's telling me I'm aligning to the top of that other text block. I keep dragging down, that's the middle of the slide. And that's usually what I shoot for. And that's the edge of the slide. And then I can make it bigger from there. All right. And then I can just drag it again, find the middle with that guide. There we go. So there we go, we've got a, a, a video there that we found on YouTube, inserted it straight away. Oh, I was supposed to put that on a third slide. So a couple of ways to do that. Um, I could just duplicate this slide. That, that's probably the, what I would what I would do. What did it, what happened? Undo what I just did. I must have hit delete. So right click on it, choose duplicate slide. And that way I'm not destroying anything, uh, but I can now come back and just make this. Let's see, let's change. If I click back where on the on the background here somewhere, I can change the layout of the slide and I'll just make it uh, blank. Now that doesn't get rid of what I have. Anyway, uh, if I click in here and I get a blinking cursor, that's gonna let me edit the text. But if I click one more time on the edge, it'll allow me to actually delete the block uh, that's there. So I need to find that you know, up, down, left, right bar. And now here's another cool trick. If I find the middle right there. And I wanna make it as big as I can. I'm gonna hold down the option key on my keyboard and then drag one of these corners and check out what happens. It changes the whole thing from the middle and it stays aligned right in the center and makes it as big as I can, I can make it. And I've got that video now. And then over here, I can just quickly delete it and change that text box back to where it was thusly. Okay, so far so good, thumbs up. Questions, sweet. Okay, let's see, next slide here, next set of instructions. Add a comment on the video slide that reminds students to watch the video. All right, so comments, a um, couple of different things. You could just put in some text, you know, and say, be sure to watch the video. Um, but what you can do is this little button right here, is comment or insert and comment is an option. While I have the video selected, I'll do that. And it'll put in a little pop-up there and I'll say, students, please be sure to watch the whole video and comment. And so that way it just kind of floats over there to the right. It doesn't take up any space on the slide. Um, you don't see those if I present, if I go to presenter view, I get my little presenter view here, but you won't see that comment. But if students are just viewing uh, the slideshow, they'll see that comment off to the right. All right, set the video to play automatically. So if I don't wanna mess with it and uh, hit the play button, that's under format options. I could double click the video. That'll start to play it actually. Um, but I'll choose format options up here at the top. That brings up some options over here on the right and play right here, play automatically. So then as soon as I open the slide, the video will start to play. If you wanna set it to uh, start and end at different times, if it's a long video and you only want them to see the middle portion of it or the beginning of the end, you can set those right there. And I can just nice, like if I say, if I wanted to start right there, I can say use current time, use current time. What's going on? It should let me do that. Anyway, don't know why that's not working, but that's okay. 
All right, play automatically and then share the presentation with two or more of your colleagues with edit rights and ask them to edit your presentation. Emily, can I, uh, can I call on you? All right, so let's share it with Emily King. A-M-I-L-Y dot, is it dot King? At Miller K-12? Yeah, dot King, yep, at Miller K-12. Oh, because I'm on my trainer account, so I've never oh. this. Okay, hey, there you are. And I'll also do Chris, see if she's paying attention in the next one. So please edit and make comments as, as needed. Add somebody else in here. Okay, and send that off. It's gonna warn me that Emily's outside of my, uh, my organization. I trust her, so I'll say share anyway. And now she'll get an email saying that Clint has shared this document uh, with her, with you, and she's got editing rights to, to access that. And now as people come in, I should see little silhouettes up here. Uh, a lot of times when you share your documents and people anonymously view them, there you go. They come in as anonymous jekylls or um, all kinds of fun animals. But if you've actually shared it with somebody and uh, they've logged in, I can see that they're in. And I can also see which slide they're on. So I'll switch back here and we'll see if Emily makes a change quickly or not. There we go. So I can see that she's in there see where she's typing, who's typing. And the nice thing is all of this is kept track of with the version history. So I can go back and see exactly who made what changes as long as I shared it with them uh, with their email address. If it's anonymous, then I can't really tell who did it, but um, I can see that and you don't have to put anything. <laughs> there you go, let's see if she can come up with one. See, it's tough to, to don't share your path. That's a great tip. Well, I don't know why I didn't come up with that one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a comment on that. So I'll do that and I'm gonna insert a comment and I'll say great tip. And if I want her to be notified of that, I can put an at symbol in front. Emily King, now that I've got you in there, great um, suggestion. If it's a task, like if this needs to be updated or, or filled out by somebody, I can use that at symbol and then assign it to them. I'm just saying great job. I don't want to make it an assign or anything, but she'll get a little email notification that I've commented and uh, she'll get a link to the document, link to that comment, and she'll be able to see. If she needs to respond to it, she can click there, respond. If we're all done and it's been resolved, I can hit the check mark and uh, we move on our merry way. Okay, thanks Emily, appreciate that. Next one, let's see on slide one. Change the font size and color. Yes, please, because the default font is boring. Um, there are different themes I can choose. Um, the built-in themes that Google give you gives you, um, they're okay. <laughs> they're not great, but it'll change the fonts and the colors and the backgrounds, and it'll do all that all at once. Purple, that's not too bad. Um, Another good tip that I'd like to share with folks is there is a great site called Slides Carnival that I get all of my um, themes from that I use in my, in my presentations. Uh, they bring up new ones all the time. They have categories that I can search from. If I really like blue templates, I can search all the blue or green or red. Uh, let's let's stay on purple because we chose that. And so then all of the purple templates that are there, this one looks kind of fun. So if I open that, it'll allow me, oh, it's a Canva template. So they have templates for PowerPoint, for Google Slides, and this one works with Canva. If you slide on down, oh, that's just a Canva one. We're doing Google Slides today. And it'll tell me right here uh, which are... Uh, compatible. So let's see. Let's let's go with. No, nah, I don't want to do winter sports. I'm done with winter. I'm really done with winter. Math lesson. There we go. So I'll click that. And if I click Google Slides, it'll open up a new tab. Ask me if I want to copy that document. Um, I'm not. I'm just going to come up here and do a little trick and change that to view. 
so that I can see what it looks like before I actually make a copy of it. On their site, they do have a little uh, preview window so that I can kind of page through and uh, see what it looks like. Gives me instructions on how to use it. Um, some great pages. Um, if like this is a great slide, and I wanna use it more than once, just right click on the slide and say, uh, make a copy. Oh, I'm just viewing the slide. Yeah, but if I did make a copy of it, I'd own it. And then I could duplicate these slides, change them as I see fit and have some fun with them. So lots more fun uh, and visually interesting than the, the built-in slides that Google gives me, but that's okay. Uh, but now it wants me to change the font size and color of the title. So we can do that through themes or I can do it uh, explicitly with the with these tools right up here. So where it says railway, these are the fonts uh, that I can choose from. As I scroll over them, it gives me a little uh, preview maybe of what that looks like. Um, it gives me my recent fonts, uh, more fonts. If anyone's ever, if you've never seen that little option there, they have many, 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 many fonts that you can grab. If there's one that you, uh, these are the ones that you have access to. If there's a specific one, you can search for them. If I come through and let's see, Josephine Sands, that one looks kind of fun. So I'll add that one in and say, okay. And now it changed my, uh, my font there. I can also change the text color right there uh, with these color chips. These are from the actual theme. So if I'm more of in a, a rust color, mood or a green mood, I can change them there. Another cool thing, if there is a um, color that I really like, let's see, let me go back to font. Um, if you do have a picture, uh, and let's do that, let's do a quick insert an image, search the web. I don't have to have a picture on my computer. I can just do a quick Google search for, um, whatever topic I want. Uh, these are gonna be all copyright free images. So you're probably not gonna find like the latest and greatest, um, you know, movie pictures or things like that. But if you're just looking for some good quality um, images that you don't have to worry about copyright for, uh, you can do those there. And then here's the fun thing. I can use this, uh, I can click on text color and I can grab this eyedropper. And then I'd like say, I really like this blue color that's in here. I can go and select that. And now my, I should have chose, I should have done better there. Let's see, text color. It remembers the last one I've chosen. So I can just drop that in there uh, and pick a color from a picture or whatever I have on there. And then uh, the font size. Let's say I wanna make this a little bit bigger. Again, the font size is right here. Click in the middle and I get a drop down, make that 72. That's probably a little big. So I can just make it a little smaller until it fits. And I can put this image down in here. Here we go. Hey, look at that. Step eight, I already did that. Insert an image that relates to digital citizenship and link to the source of the image. Okay, that's that might be the tricky one. So um, I did just grab this off of image search. Let's see. I do that. There we go. So it's from the Wikimedia Commons. So I'm going to click that. There we go. And now I can grab the URL. And this is just good practice here. So to get that, I, I did the image search, hovered over the image, and there's a tiny little um, magnifying glass. I don't know if that's bigger on your screen or not. Uh, but I just clicked that magnifying glass and it did uh, the image search. And now I can click that and click the link button and then link it back to that page, apply. I could also insert some text and say image courtesy of Wiki Commons. I can link that as well with the link button, paste that there. Make it italic, bang, 
maybe make it about 10 point, and then I can just slide it on top of the image right there. One, another one of my favorite tricks, I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard and nudge that around to get it where I want it to go. Okay, oh, we're getting close to time. I better hurry up here. Uh, only a couple more slides to go. Let's see, add comments to the speaker notes. Very helpful down here under speaker notes. Um, make, whoops, I didn't have my cursor in the right spot. Down here at the bottom, I can put in speaker notes and then as I'm presenting, especially in my presentation mode, uh, I get this little window here and any comments, speaker notes would appear right in there. So I can just say um, image from blah, there we go. Okay, let's see, copy and paste the slide. Haven't done that yet. So edit, copy, I like to use duplicate, but edit, paste works as well. And then from there, I could just change, keep the title and keep adding in other internet safety tips or change those, um, change those bullet points as needed. Okay, last step, add a video from my Google Drive. So let's do that. Here, let's see if I have one. Insert video and let me go back. Drive, let's see, oh, Zoom videos. Maybe I'll have something in there. Nothing here. Hey, I've got one, okay. So I'll click that, click insert, and we've got me spreading the love. I don't know what I'm talking about here, <laughs> but uh, you can add videos from Google Drive as well. All right, last step, present directly from Google Meet. Uh, so I'm gonna open up a new Meet window, meet, meet.google.com. And before we run out of time, let me drop the, uh, the role in here one more time, just so you guys make sure it's in the chat, make sure you're signing that and getting um, credit for being here today. Uh, start an instant meeting. Uh, we'll allow that. Let's see if I can use it on two different things at, at once. Let's see. Hey, here I am again. Okay, and then now under activities, I think there's a whiteboard. Maybe I'm just not seeing the button here. Up here on the upper right. No, that's my audio. Allow. Let's see, present, how about more options here? Let's see, whiteboard, change layout, picture and picture, visual effects. Well, where is it? Present now, oh, there we go. Present, yeah, I thought there was supposed to be just like a button that I could click. I've not done this before, as you can tell, uh, but I could share, let's see. Must be a Chrome browser, present docs, to slide me. I apologize about that. I don't, I'm not seeing that. Does anybody else see a camera captions, reactions, present, whiteboard, layout, screen, picture, picture. I know it's an option and it's possible that it's in the, um, it's only available if you're in one of the other paid versions of uh, workspace, Google workspace. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna chalk it up to that. So <laughs> that is the end of the slides. I'm gonna switch back desktops to there. I'm gonna stop sharing. Any questions from anyone there? I didn't see anything come up in the chat. Good to go, Emily. Okay. All right. Um, if you need to bail, that's cool. Uh, I do have a couple, always like to share some informational kind of things with you. Um, oh, here's all my slides. Let me get past those quickly. Let's see. Do, 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 do. These are the information, I just, the slides I just went through. There we go. Okay. So I've got some other resources there. I'll make sure that's in the Midas notes for you. Uh, some things we talked about last time, backup and sync for Google Drive. It allows you to set up a document backup for your computer. 
Uh, my wife recently just lost her whole computer and wished she had this working. Uh, so get that going. If you ever move to another district, Google Takeout will allow you to take your data, your emails and all that kind of stuff and move it into another Google uh, account. The slides we went through today with all of them and then information about the level one uh, educator um, certification. So this we've got a choice board for you this month if you want to do some anytime uh, self-paced PD. It's not really a choice board, but it is a Nearpod self-paced activity on digging deeper into choice boards. Uh, there's some great examples and ideas and uh, some things to share. Appreciate Sahara and Nikki from uh, from Louisiana sharing that uh, for us this, this month. It's our schedule for the rest of the month. Next week, we're going to talk about some uh, digital citizenship and media literacy resources available to you from Nearpod and whatever other Nearpod questions you've got. Um, we do have Utah Ed Chats every Wednesday night on Twitter, 8 p.m. Uh, great topic this week, uh, portrait of a teacher leader from Tabitha Pacheco. She is the director of the Utah Teacher Fellows. Uh, just did some great sessions uh, at the USAC conference that we had last week. So I highly recommend tuning into that. I listened to the last episode of the USAC podcast. Uh, with Kiara Bettis, it features actually uh, my counterpart, Brandon Harrison from Richfield and our executive director here at SEDC, Joe B. Wright, talking about regional service centers and the kind of stuff we do and what life is like in rural education in Utah. Uh, really nice listen. I, I listened to it about a week ago and enjoyed it. Uh, sign the roll. I've put that in there. And again, we always post these recordings at bit.ly, bit.ly slash SEDC, triple capital T, and archive. So you can go back and watch past episodes and get credit that way. If you go back and watch an old episode, uh, just shoot me an email with a summary of uh, what you learned, any questions you still have, and uh, what what you'll try to implement or what, you, what you'll try in your classroom uh, the next week. So again, these slides, uh, based on a template from Slides Carnival, I've kind of customized this one pretty heavily, but um, that's it, Google Slides. So any other questions or comments? Liesl, you're welcome. Glad you guys are here. Any other questions not Google Slides related or any anything happening that I can help you out with while, while you've got me? All right. 